Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar on how technology is helping banks to mitigate COVID-19 threat. We're just gonna wait for a few more attendees to join and we'll be getting started shortly. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning to some of you and good evening to others. We are going to go ahead and get started with SLK's webinar on how technology is helping banks to mitigate COVID-19 threats. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our agenda for today. We'll be starting with COVID solutions and moving to customer challenges, regulatory guidance, how technology is helping banks and FIs financial institutions, and then it will conclude with a 10 to 15 minute Q&A session. As a reminder, if everybody could please um, go to mute uh, as well. Next, I'm gonna go briefly over so, a quick SLK overview. Thank you. SLK was founded 20 years ago in Bangalore, India, and now has 6,000 professionals working across the US, Europe, and Asia. We are a technology con uh, consulting and, pro and, and products company specializing in banking, insurance, financial services, and manufacturing. SLK focuses on high touch, long lasting relationships with our customers. SLK offers cutting edge products and solutions for rapid automation, which is helping our customers on the transformation journey. I'm now going to hand it over to our host, Mohan Joshi and Chai Krishnan. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Uh, good morning, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Mohan Joshi. I'm a principal consultant uh, working for BFSI Consulting Group, uh, part of SLK. Uh, so this webinar is uh, divided into two parts. Uh, the first part is where we're going to do a quick recap of the current situation. Uh, and the second part is where we're going to talk about uh, how technology is helping banks and financial services. Uh, so my quick background, uh, I have over 25 years of experience in banking and financial services and been with SLK for last five years. Uh, I also have my colleague Chai Krishnan um, who is going to co-host. So, Chai, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening from wherever you guys are joining. Uh, my name is Chai Krishnan, a principal consultant with BFSI Consulting Group uh, here at SLK, with a specific, specific focus around digital transformation, uh, IT, cloud adoption, and enterprise architecture. So I would be covering the technology solutions which we are seeing among our customers and in the industry 
to counter this uh, pandemic of COVID-19 and to offer a better customer experience. Thank you, Jay. So before we begin, uh, I just thought we'll quickly introduce uh, the BCG group and what we do. So essentially, we are a group of consultants and subject matter experts, and we help our customers to bring together their strategy, their business, technology, and innovation to solve some of their problems, right? And uh, how we differentiate with others is that we help them right from uh, strategy definition all the way up to value realization, right? The other thing that we do as a part of this group is industry research, uh, right? And this webinar and this research report is an outcome of that. Uh, what we also did was uh, we presented this report to most of our customers in the last eight weeks. Uh, we also helped them implement some of the technology solutions, uh, helped them with automating certain pr processes to mitigate the problem uh, in the current situation. So what we are going to present and talk about is not just the research, but also what we've seen on the ground, right? Quickly moving on, uh, what we do, so we help our customers uh, in different areas, uh, right from defining digital strategy, consulting them around consult, uh, customer experience, help them define IT roadmap and strategy, um, you know, help them with M&A uh, and, and execution of the M&A strategies and uh, business innovation, right? So this is what we do, and uh, our motto is uh, we bring together innovation and pragmatism, right, uh, to the consulting services that we offer. All right, so talking about the situation, I think we are already eight weeks in the this pandemic situation. Uh, when we started eight weeks ago, we had kind of listed few areas. I, I think uh, what you see here, most of it uh, we've seen happening on the ground, except for last two points which I want to talk today. Uh, in terms of how banks, uh, regulators, and industries responded, right? So what we have clearly seen is the agility, right, that they've shown. And uh, we will talk about some of those examples. What we've also seen is that uh, industry to a large extent has demonstrated a resilience, right, in the current situation. And that is what is going to determine, uh, you know, uh, what kind of recovery we will see in coming days, right? So analysts uh, have already started speculating whether it's going to be a V-shaped recovery, U-shaped recovery, W-shaped recovery, and all of that. Hopefully we'll get out of this situation very quickly. But what we hear is that uh, we'll probably never go back to the old ways of doing things, right? So that, that's one message that uh, we've heard from many of our customers. Moving on, uh, again, when we started uh, way back in March, uh, you know, we started looking at uh, what analysts have been saying in terms of impact on the industry. And uh, the first chart actually shows uh, the kind of uh, impact that various industries will have. So obviously, uh, industries like travel, transport, manufacturing, we expected to have uh, severe impact. A few other industries probably not so much impacted, right? Uh, banking and financial services uh, obviously gets impact impacted um, as a cascade, right? So the first chart actually shows uh, what was the forecast. Uh, what we also did was uh, we tried to determine the recent past. So last couple of weeks, uh, we started looking at some of the data points. And uh, uh, so the graph below, the chart below actually shows the impact on card transaction volumes, right? Just as an indicator of how different industries have been impacted. Uh, what we see is it is pretty much in line with, uh, you know, the forecast that was made two, three months ago, right? 
So that's where, uh, that's about the industry impact. Talking about how industry has responded, right? And we'll talk about uh, how banks and financial institutions have uh, responded in a bit. But uh, just looking at uh, how other industries, how they have re responded, right? So we've seen um, different new business models emerging. Uh, so the first example is, you know, where uh, uh, stores have kind of launched uh, a contactless curbside pickup, right? Essentially, customers can online and uh, pick up the delivery, right? So this is an example of uh, Best Buy store in U.S. And uh, what we know that uh, they developed this solution and launched within a couple of weeks, right? So that kind of shows the uh, agility that the industry has shown and uh, how the digital adoption has picked up, right? Second example is uh, restaurants. We know that restaurants were badly impacted. Now what uh, some of the fintechs did was they started helping restaurants to go online. So this is an example of what Square did, right? So they helped their customers uh, and mostly restaurants to go on online very quickly. We've seen similar trends in payments, right? Uh, so customers moving towards uh, contactless payments more and more. And uh, we just wanted to validate, uh, you know, all these trends. Uh, so the graph on the right actually shows penetration of uh, U.S. e-commerce, right, uh, as a percentage of overall retail sales. As you can see, uh, in the last eight weeks, the penetration has gone up from 16% all the way up to 27%, right? And that's kind of equivalent to what happened in the last 10 years. And uh, what we've seen is uh, people are saying that we'll probably never go back to the old normal. And so probably, you know, this will result into a new normal, right? Uh, so that is the digital ad adoption uh, in various industries. As I said, we'll talk in detail about uh, what banks are doing. Moving on, uh, we also decided to look at uh, closely at the uh, customers of banks, right, and what kind of challenges they are facing. Um, so when we started, we knew that there's going to be impact on their ability to pay the loans, right, and that is what we've seen <clears throat> slowly emerging on the ground. Uh, the unemployment rate are going through the roof, right, so we will definitely have impact uh, on the loan portfolio. So that is something uh, we will definitely see in coming months. Uh, the customer behavior uh, obviously has been impacted. Uh, customers are not visiting branches. So that is kind of having impact on customer service and how banks need to respond to this situation, correct? Uh, small business, I think all of you know, have been severely impacted uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. The small businesses are trying to adopt to a new business model, and obviously they are they are facing challenges. We see similar impact on corporate uh, clients. You know, they are also facing a lot of uncertainty. Uh, there's a pressure on cutting the cost. So all of these impacts uh, we have seen on the ground, right? And that is obviously impacting banks uh, in terms of how they can offer their services and continue to grow or at least uh, uh, remain neutral at this point of time. So while this was going on, uh, as I said, uh, regulators, governments, Fed, all of them responded pretty quickly. Uh, and all of them are trying to provide a relief, uh, bring in stability. Uh, so we have seen uh, Fed in U.S., for example, trying to reduce the rates. We have seen similar actions across the globe. Uh, in U.S., in particularly, uh, a huge stimulus was announced. Part of part of it was uh, around uh, the Paycheck Protection, which is called as PPP. 
And uh, the remarkable thing here is that uh, uh, within few weeks after the program was announced, the banks actually developed the solution, offered it to customers, the funds were distributed. I think that, that was something remarkable. Uh, and uh, while talking to some of our customers, uh, banks, they said that uh, what we did in a couple of weeks would have taken months, right, in the old days. Uh, so that that is what we have seen. So a lot of relief measures, uh, you know, the Fed and regulators have been providing advisory to banks, uh, telling them to reduce or waive some of the fees, help them with uh, payment deferrals and all of that, right? So that is what we have seen uh, regulators and Fed doing. Uh, it is definitely bringing in some stability in the market. Moving on, uh, when we started looking at how it is impacting the banks, uh, we realized that uh, the impact across various lines of business uh, uh, is going to be different. Uh, so here is a view of, uh, you know, the severity of impact versus the speed of recovery, right? So broadly, you know, this is divided into four segments. Uh, so for example, uh, the bottom right is uh, where the impact is going to be severe and the recovery is also going to be very, very slow, right? So commercial real estate home loans, for example, it is expected that the impact will be severe and the recovery, uh, the speed of recovery will also be less, correct? So it's going to come out very slowly. <clears throat> So what uh, banks have been doing is to define a strategy based on uh, these buckets. Uh, so for example, in this case, uh, we've seen banks making additional provisions, right? Uh, obviously that is impacting the profitability, but that's, that's one strategy that uh, they're going to have. The other one, uh, for example, uh, the expectation is that the personal loans, consumer payments, some of these areas uh, will recover much faster, and hence uh, the banks need to adopt a different strategy here. So agility becomes very, very important. Uh, customer experience, customer retention are some of the strategies that uh, we have seen banks adopting uh, for those line of businesses. And uh, similarly, you know, areas, uh, for example, commercial payments, uh, they are looking at modernizing. Of course, this is, you know, midterm strategy, but uh, where they can look at modernizing their existing infrastructure. And uh, the bottom left is where uh, they can start rethinking uh, their business models. And uh, when we presented this to some of our customers, they, uh, it resonated well. I think uh, we've seen banks across trying to adopt strategies similar to this. So with that, I think, uh, you know, we, we need to get into the details of uh, how industry has been responding. So let me hand it over to Chai to take it from here. Thank you. Thank over Mohan. to you, Chai. Uh, thank you. So. As Mohan was talking about, this pandemic really tested the resiliency of this uh, whole industry, banking and financial institution. And as what we observed from a response standpoint of view, uh, some um, enterprises rose up to the challenge and took on head on and kept the best of customer experience in mind, the best of uh, the customer safety in mind to address that scenario. Some uh, struggled initially, but were able to cope up with it. But essentially, everybody started thinking about how is this gonna be a reality going forward, right? Because this pandemic really tested most of the enterprises BCP and to an extent of what they had never imagined. So from a bank standpoint of view, as the branches starts closing down, right? How do I, 
ensure that human experience is continued in my digital channel, right? Apart from the stimulus package and all those other things from a Fed standpoint of view where they started um, allowing customers to defer the loan payment or enabling certain uh, other factors to help the customer experiences, a lot of people started thinking about what kind of solution should I be looking at, right? If my call center is already closed down, how do I continue to support the customers? Can I put a switch uh, so that the calls gets routed to their mobile phones and help them get online so that the customers uh, are not impacted? So they started doing that. The second uh, way that they started thinking that is in terms of training some of the tellers and repurposing them to support this overall increase in the traffic which was coming into the call center. That was one approach. This other approach, what people started thinking about is, this is actually putting a lot of load on my systems, right? So they started thinking about how do I scale up my overall infrastructure? And because the physical branches are getting closed and things like that, we have to put out educations for people to get online start signing up for online banking if they're not done. So what we have seen, at least in the industry, uh, and along with our customers, they started seeing the traffic uh, which was hitting the online services um, tremendously increase. Uh, one uh, stat which I want to uh, throw out here is, uh, I think it was Bank of America who uh, were talking about in one of their uh, webinar posts that the traffic which was coming to their chatbot, uh, Erica, was almost twofold. And another bank based out of Minnesota was uh, getting a tremendous increase in the overall online traffic which was hitting their digital channel because of closure of the banks and things like that. Some banks started looking at it in a more different way, right? It's more about, is there an opportunity for me to look at uh, putting a chat bot so that I can divert and give some kind of a cushion for the traffic which is uh, uh, coming into the call center. So they looked at uh, solutions uh, like LivePerson, uh, Pipestream, where a AI-enabled chatbot was made uh, available online so that it can basically start cushioning and addressing customer queries uh, in the beginning, and a single agent can take basically answer multiple um, customer chats, right? Some of the new banks uh, looked at in a different way. A uh, couple of uh, examples I want to quote here. One, it was more about how do I care about my community? Uh, how do I take care of this, uh, my community during this problem time, right? So I want to quote an example from Citizens Bank of Edmund, a small town in Oklahoma, where the CEO, it's a small town community bank, where the CEO, Jill, partnered with Mark Cuban, the Dallas Mavericks CEO, to give the community more of an OD option, overdraft option, till the stimulus package is announced and the stimulus checks amount gets deposited. So each of the members of that particular bank got a close to $900 uh, OD uh, cushioning, which was a great help during the time of crisis. Similarly, Chime, which is more of a challenger neo bank, what they did was they utilized technology. So they tweaked in their fraud models during the first four weeks and tried it on a test set of customers to, who have signed up for their spot me feature to increase that uh, amount of 2,200, still the stimulus package hits. After, towards the beginning of April, they rolled it out to the entire customer. So they adapted more of a fraud and an AI to help uh, their customers and in, uh, help them in their in this particular scenarios, right? A lot of banks are looking at how do I revamp my overall cybersecurity and fraud risk controls. With this kind of an uh, increased traffic in online, what we are seeing is the instances of uh, fraudsters getting into action, trying to take over the control and things like that is uh, we are seeing more and more. So banks have started uh, putting out education in terms of how to protect themselves from the bank education in terms of what kind of fraud controls the bank is providing, uh, offering to the customer so that they can guard 
uh, against these kind of attacks. Not just that, but also to educate uh, customers about how to use effectively different online banking uh, services. Could be person-to-person -person payment, uh, could be contactless payments, things like that. As Mohan was talking uh, in the beginning, small businesses are probably one of the biggest hit during this pandemic. And he spoke about the Square, how Square helped uh, getting a particular business online with a very simple click a page into their marketplace. Another example which I want to quote is about the cabbage, where basically as part of their uh, portfolio of small businesses, they started offering digital uh, gift certificate as a sales part of it, so that the small businesses get paid today and the digital markets uh, digital certificate, the customers can use it down the line so that it's more of to offer the community support uh, as part of encouraging the local business and things like that. Uh, Moni, if you want to move the next one. Within our customer base, uh, within the set of customers whom we serve, uh, we are seeing a uh, a lot of increased uh, activities in terms of rolling out new digital uh, channels, adapting to a lot of agile methodology, distributed agile methodology, adapting to a lot of collaboration, online collaboration tools, right? Some of the examples which I want to quote are, is around uh, if you want, since the branch uh, traffic is coming down, some have closed, some are operating it in a, kind of a minimal footprint. They started encouraging people to uh, use appointment scheduler which they have rolled out online so that they can book an appointment so that if they really want to meet a banker and have that discussion, right? Uh, one of the bank based out of Buffalo, uh, from a sales standpoint of view, starts um, encouraging the use of e-signature for the entire onboarding and fulfillment uh, processes, right? And Similarly, a uh, lot of banks started using the use of RPA and bots, especially to enable this whole onboarding from a PPP standpoint of view. Um, for submitting uh, PPP loans to the Fed or even for the doc prep process, right, uh, in this whole thing. And a lot of um, adoption of cloud. We are seeing a lot of adoption of cloud in terms of uh, either for collaboration, so we are seeing a lot of uh, increase in the adoption of Microsoft Office and Teams, so that Teams, even if they're working remote, can be still be productive and can deliver the experiences, uh, what is required at this stage. Also, from an other uh, angle, from a sales angle, uh, one of the bank based out of Tennessee, um, their problem, what they were thinking was, how do I serve the high net worth individuals at this kind of a scenario? And they took that option of more of a training. So help the wealth managers uh, get accustomed to some of these collaboration tools such as WebEx, how to conduct sessions with the customers using WebEx, how best to make uh, use of some of these tools so that it, even though they are not really uh, in person, at least it ensures that human experience is still there and they can get a confidence that uh, the customers and the banks are together, right? Uh, quickly shifting, uh, I think we already sp uh, spoke about immediate responses because this pandemic is almost now in the eighth week. Uh, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, we'll quickly look at what is that uh, in the midterm and the long term, which is getting changed, right? <clears throat> so quickly switching over to the, uh, what we call it as the new normal or the mid to near term, we see a tremendous increase in uh, digital and digital adoption, right? It could be in terms of online banking services, mobile apps uh, adoptions, or even for that uh, finance uh, wellness or financial management uh, tools, right? So that is going to increase. Digital will dictate this whole uh, ecosystem value chain in terms of the sales, connect, services, uh, whole value chain, right? How do I look at 
and how do I adapt myself and my enterprise into this new normal where consumers are demanding more and more touchless interactions, right? Uh, even within a branch environment or uh, using a remote things. Uh, we, are see, we will see more and more um, adoption of video tellers uh, is gonna come out, right? Um, and it's also not uh, wherever the banks have not adapted to some of these uh, new age tools such as chatbot or even virtual assistants, we will see more and more adoption of those things from an alternate uh, channel standpoint of view. And not just that, the whole business model will also start changing it, right? Uh, you have to start thinking about a cash flow based uh, lending or with everybody working remote, who's gonna use the office spaces, right? If nobody is using office spaces, my portfolio of commercial real estate loans is gonna get a big hit. How do I, as a bank, ensure that I am covered from that? What kind of fraud control, or what kind of uh, risk models I need to be putting in to counter this new normal? How do I look at this whole CRE loans? Is there other options in which we need to look about from this, right? And not just this, the previous notion of build versus buy, I think it's already settled with the emergence of fintechs and things like that. We are seeing more and more banks are moving towards more of this platform, where in which if somebody is offering a better service, can I plug in that service using either a microservices or something so that I can still be relevant in my customer experience, but also grow along with that, right? That will be the primarily from a business standpoint. From a workplace standpoint of view, uh, and things like that, the, the work environment is gonna change, right? Uh, in terms of how do I uh, collaborate between teams? The whole notion of I'm not ready for agile from a remote standpoint of view, I'm more of want to work together here, that notion is gonna get defeated because it doesn't matter whether you're sitting at home now. Most of the guys of uh, us who are on this webinar are sitting at home and still being productive. And sometimes me and Mohan jokingly talk about this, that the work never stops because everybody is online always. With the Microsoft Teams, we are always on, the meeting is always on. But it also provides a challenges to the whole IT infrastructure standpoint, of view, right? In terms of if there is an option from a outsourcing standpoint of view, or even for that matter, how does this whole environment gonna counter my whole PII and all those controls need to be uh, mature. Also, more and more uh, operations and back office operations, which is was always a manual driven and more of swivel chair integration, will start realizing the real benefit of RPA, right, our intelligent um, automation so that I can cut down on those manual tasks and so that I can help either my teams and my employees to be more productive or also offer better uh, customer experience. Uh, cyber security uh, will become a major uh, factor. In the, in the environment where a lot of us are working from home, and it could be more of a BYOD or even office provided um, infrastructure. How do I control and safeguard my enterprise asset? How do I safeguard my customers from any of the security incidents? So more and more uh, things gonna start arriving from that. Distributed agile, uh, especially uh, for companies like us, is, is becoming a more and more reality now, right? Uh, we are sitting here in Bangalore, Mohan is sitting in Cincinnati, USA. We work collaboratively from his 7.30 to till about 12 o'clock, we work collaboratively, ensure that things are get done, right? So that is, uh, people and enterprises will start realizing the real benefit of distributed agile uh, now uh, more than uh, previously. So Just what is- Just there, uh, Chai, if I may. Uh, a similar example, uh, you know, we heard from one of our customers, right? Uh, they suddenly realized that uh, they actually can adopt 
this distributed agile, especially when they implemented uh, this whole PPP solution, they realized that uh, you know they can actually go distributed agile way, right? Uh, one because they are forced to do, but uh, uh, they made a comment that uh, you know we kind of like this way of working, uh, and it they, they were amazed that they could implement this so quickly. So they will probably never go back to the old ways of working, right? So uh, that was an interesting example. I think most of the banks are uh, realizing that uh, you know they need to change the model. And uh, there are actually benefits of adopting this model, right? Um, so I'm sure we will see this uh, going forward as well, right? Sure. Sorry, go ahead. Hey. Yeah. So what are we seeing as a new normal uh, in the industry and with our customers, right? Digital, 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 right? Digital is the way to make the business, uh, connect with employees, help customers through sales, service, and grow with them in that whole value chain, right? So that becomes a key, key thing. And how do I enable that digital? Some might be laggards uh, in the current scenario from their digital transformation standpoint of view. Some might be leaders. But I think that whole gap is going to come uh, is going to be reduced very quickly. And we are seeing this with our customers. We are seeing this with our customers in terms of how quickly they are adapting to some of the new uh, digital things, right? It could be in terms of building responsive web applications so that uh, it can seamlessly be done, or even for that matter, taking the sales channels onto uh, online, not just for consumer, but also for commercial and small businesses so that we can uh, reduce the overall burden or also improve the overall customer experience, right? But it also means that we are redefining this whole workplace. And this remote workplace is suddenly become a reality for us. And work from home, which was not really an accepted scenario, except outside Valley, probably, Silicon Valley. Now it's a true scenario for a call center agent, or even for that matter, tomorrow a branch teller, right? Who's helping somebody to uh, either get signed up on an online banking or helping them with something. And how do we enable that remote workforce? Right? That's going to be a key thing in this whole thing. And not just this, how do I augment this more of a human and a machine uh, connection in terms of augmenting them with the digital workforce? That's going to be another key thing. In all these things, some of the key controls uh, which we see is getting more prioritized and getting a, a focus which was needed earlier with most of the organization is how do I ensure uh, customer privacy? How do I ensure and protect the customer PII? Is there an option? Should I accelerate my TDM journey, test data management journey, so that I can enable this more and more? How do I adapt automation into a lot of work which I do today, um, adapting CI, CD, uh, DevOps, or including security as part of this whole um, DevOps, which is DevSecOps, right? Whoever are not adapting some of those, I think they will start uh, getting in more and more. And the work, uh, as I was telling earlier, it becomes true 24 by 7 with everybody being remote and happening. That essentially becomes how do we uh, have that work-life uh, balance and the discipline, right? How does the whole uh, HR thing has to work out in this new normal where people are not really meeting and connecting and things like that, right? From a uh, business standpoint of view, I think they are waking up to this new reality that contactless is the true scenario going forward, right? Uh, PayPal announced their long pending project in terms of accepting QR based uh, payment. Uh, India did it way back with Paytm and things like that. But more and more adoption of these contactless technologies is going to be coming towards it. So 
that's a bottom line. Essentially, what I want to uh, summarize uh, from this whole thing is digital uh, will be the key differentiator in terms of how do I conduct myself in this scenario. And apart from digital, any other augmenting technologies, right? Adoption of RPA, adoption of um, OCR, ICR, adoption of AI for better fraud controls, uh, better risk monitoring controls and things like that. And not just this, uh, there are experimentation within the Indian software industries uh, in terms of how do I enable facial recognition for seamless uh, monitoring so that I can provide some kind of a guarantee for some of these uh, work in terms of the BPO and things like that where they might have to touch PII to manage their production. Right? How do I enable facial recognition to monitor that and control it and provide that within the boundaries of the compliance <clears throat> defined by various organizations. So a lot of this is going to be a true scenario in the coming days. Uh, having said that, uh, we are working uh, very diligently with a lot of our customers in making some of these uh, to reality uh, in terms of building digital solutions for our customers, um, especially in the areas of PPP, uh, helping them uh, roll out these solutions uh, at a much faster rate, helping them after the rollout of the PPP, looking at how do we get to the next stage in terms of a loan forgiveness or even from a doc prep and standpoint of view. How do I look at automation, right, in various uh, journeys of either a customer or an employee to help them counter this and start reducing the stress on the overall ecosystem? assistant and try, uh, helping them building better fraud solution using some of our AI capabilities, which we have built it in-house, um, right? So, and with that, uh, I would like to stop and open up for questions. And we are taking questions as part of the comments box. So any questions you have, you can type it over there. Uh, Emily is uh, very diligently monitoring it and she's going to read out questions for me and Mohan. So just just that, point, uh, Chai, before we open up, I think uh, very recently I came across a solution where, uh, you know, uh, the solution helps uh, organizations to onboard employees, right, remotely. Uh, and that's a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, solution in the, uh, in the current state. Uh, because, uh, you know, obviously, how do you hire new talent now, right? Uh, so so they're trying to address that area as well. Uh, so I think just adding to what uh, Chai was saying, we've seen this adoption uh, across the board, and uh, once people get used to it, I think uh, that is what will dictate the, the new normal, right? So with that, I think... Uh, we can open up uh, for questions. Thank you. Yes, uh, to reiterate what Chai said, we will be taking questions in the comments section. So if you do have any questions, please go ahead and type those in and I will read them out loud for you. Well, we, okay, uh, I'm currently not seeing any questions. Yes. Um, um, oh, here we go. They're coming in. I'm sorry. Um, we have a question. Is the spend going to go down and by how much? Okay, I will take the question and Mohan will uh, add in. in uh, we are not in regards being, to uh, IT spend. Yes, so with regards to IT spend, uh, it's the reverse, at least what we are seeing uh, with most of our customers, right? This is 
most of our customers are looking at this as an opportunity to reinvent themselves. Some were already in that journey. Uh, some are already uh, at least planning in that journey. So we are seeing uh, actually an increase in the overall uh, IT spend because in order to play in the digital world, you need to start thinking about a lot of new technologies, right? You need to start thinking about how do I reduce my overall risk in terms of hosting. So that essentially opens up for cloud adoption and cloud journey, right? When we talk about that cloud journey, you have multiple strategies, but in terms of other uh, strategies, as I was telling you before, we are seeing banks are realizing that it is no more going to be a zoo of tools and products within my ecosystem. I need to be open so that I can seamlessly integrate, right, uh, easily and take it further from there. Uh, some banks uh, who had some of these digital initiatives as part of their roadmap and had not paid attention are uh, making this a priority, right? One example which I want to reiterate was the live person uh, uh, initiative, which is becoming a priority now for uh, one of the bank based out of Birmingham, Alabama, right? So things like this will start increasing, and we are seeing a significant increase in terms of how their overall IT spend and how they look at their business in this new normal, which is dominated by digital, right? Um, yep. Okay. And uh, just to add to okay. that, uh, Jai, uh, I probably, um, you know, I can guess where this question is coming from. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, especially for banks, uh, they are required to make additional provisions, right? Uh, so that that uh, is one driver for them to essentially reprioritize. But as uh, Chai was saying, uh, what we what we have seen banks doing is actually evaluating these options, right? So, uh, for example, in in case of PPP, uh, when banks realize that they can't, uh, uh, for example, develop a solution from scratch, they reached out to fintechs, right? Which had, uh, which provided a ready-made solution, right? And uh, they finalized the contract within a record time, right? Normally in a bank, to finalize a contract with a vendor takes weeks, uh, if not months, right? So in this case, they finalized that within a week and uh, implemented that solution. And this is all a cloud-based solution, right? So if you consider the spending on this cloud solution, obviously the banks invested into this, right? So their IT spend has actually gone up. We, we would see, uh, uh, I think from our perspective, uh, there will definitely be reprioritization. Uh, so we will see spend going down in some areas, uh, specifically around branches. Uh, this is now a very good reason for banks to, uh, you know, adopt that strategy reduce branches, but focus on digital solutions, correct? So uh, this is what uh, uh, we are seeing on the ground, uh, uh, right? And uh, as, as Chai was saying, either the banks and organizations adopt uh, digital solutions or they'll perish. I, I mean, harsh as it may sound, it is a reality, right, in the current situation. I hope it okay. answered your question. Um, I think so. We have um, another question that came in. Um, let me see, we have a few actually. As a software engineer, uh, wanted to know, is there any new business or, pro oh, um, hold on. Sorry, I, I missed one. Um, there was a follow-up to um, the question uh, about the IT spend. So in regards to cash withdrawals like ATMs, do you see decline in adoption? If yes, 
then what's the alternatives? I can take uh, the question around the ATM and uh, the cash withdrawal. Uh, I think there's one more interesting question probably, Chai, you can handle. So to answer to that question, uh, definitely there has been, uh, you know, reduction in terms of ATM usage for obvious, obvious reasons, right? People uh, would like to avoid going out or, uh, you know, have any kind of uh, interaction, right? Or uh, where, uh, you know, handling cash or going to ATM. So that is a definite, uh, there will be definite reduction. To the extent that uh, people have started using contactless payments, right? So these contactless cards were around for a long time, uh, and we were talking to one of our customers, which is the largest uh, payment processor, and uh, they said that uh, the, the contactless payments, right, uh, the increase has been significant uh, in the last couple of weeks. So um, definitely, I think uh, the other area, just to add to this ATM usage is, um, checks, right? And people are saying this might be the final nail in the coffin, right, for check processing, because clearly uh, people would try and avoid that, uh, uh, you know, going to a Dropbox uh, or making a payment uh, using checks. So um, all this is pointing to digital payments, right? And that's, that's the reality that uh, we have seen on the ground. <clears throat> I think there was a question around uh, what a new software engineer can do. I'm sure Jai can um, address that. The next, yeah, the next question is, um, is there a change in the software delivery approaches to deliver solutions super fast? How should our team scale up to this? Yeah, uh, I think this, is, this changing paradigm in terms of the software delivery was happening. Uh, it was just that this is kind of an awakening for people who have not adapted for that, right? Uh, first one, in terms of adapting tools uh, and technologies, uh, which will help them in terms of the automation, right? Automating some of your delivery tasks, uh, which some of our customers have already adapted. Most of our team have uh, matured in that Thing, which is CI, CD, things, right? Second aspect is more in terms of some of these emerging principles of around distributed agile. How do I become more and more mature in that practices so that I can uh, deliver better productivity, I can deliver better product. Third is primarily around the collaboration, right? Uh, with this kind of a setup in terms of remote working, how can I tap into some of the collaboration tools? It could be a chat, it could be a video call on Zoom or Teams. How do I ensure the same kind of an environment which we used to have it during pre-COVID, like sitting or writing on a whiteboard and doing things? So those are the things which we are seeing as an adaption within our teams. And it essentially has a learning curve. Some teams can better align themselves and adapt. Some teams will lag. I think we need to help them with a strong foundation in terms of educating them, evangelizing this whole process change culture. Okay. Thank you, Jai. Um, I have another question here. Um, what is SLK doing in short term and long term to help their customers in terms of futuristic technology specific solutions? So, uh, Mohan, I will take this one and you can add in, right? So, we are doing in a couple of things. One, we are seeing, uh, we have within SLK as part of our innovation practice and R&D practice, we have proprietary tools which we have built over a period of time, which caters to uh, automation in the testing area, RPA and intelligence automation, and also in terms of the AI, 
right? So we are using these tools to deliver better solution to some of our insurance customer, right? In terms of either uh, the whole process discovery, understanding the opportunities for automation, or it could be in terms of better models for uh, analyzing the loan delinquencies for one of the banks based out of uh, Tulsa. So we are building these newer models, newer uh, solutions for them, right? Second, uh, there is a lot of focus, as I was telling you, in terms of how do I partner, how do I enable the maturity in terms of my API and microservices adoption. So we are working collaboratively with our customers in terms of maturing their API roadmaps by utilizing some of the industry best practices, right? It could be uh, FDH, uh, which is the new data format which is emerging. How do I see that getting adapted so that we can have a common language from a microservices or an API adoption? Or it could be in terms of the buy-on so that I can accelerate my adoption to this uh, whole um, environment. The third aspect is in terms of thinking from a digital uh, standpoint of view on design. We are conducting uh, workshops and we are conducting some of the new innovations as part of the innovation culture, what we have built within SLK, where we have got some uh, nice cool ideas which we are actually in the process of evaluating, like a mini shark tank, which we want to build on it and take it to customers. So it's an exciting phase uh, within SLK in that uh, innovation segment. Just to add, uh, Chai, I think uh, one more area that uh, a lot of banks are focusing on in this current situation is around data, right? So how can I make use of data to improve my uh, models? Now, these models could be, like Chai, Chai said, uh, around delinquency, right? Uh, so as I was saying, the biggest issue that the, the banks have is uh, you know, defaults, correct? Uh, the loan defaults. Uh, so the better they are able to handle this using data, the better they will be able to come out of this situation. Uh, so there is a lot of focus on, uh, you know, having insights or using data insights to redefine some of their models, uh, the ways to kind of help customers uh, so that uh, they can improve the customer retention, right? Uh, so that is what we have seen uh, uh, and how we are helping our customers to redefine their loan portfolios, right? So that's another area how we are helping our customers. Okay. Thank you so much, Mohan. Um, as we are heading to the noon hour, we're going to go ahead and conclude our webinar. Uh, we want to thank everyone so much for joining, and please look out for additional webinars from SLK. If you have questions or additional questions that haven't been answered, um, you can reach out to us or we can um, discuss one-on-one -on -one at a further time. Um, my email address, you can email me personally. Um, it was in the invite um, that was emailed to you. Um, again, thank you all for joining, and I hope you enjoy your evening or the rest of your afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stay well. Stay safe.